Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. And in this video, I'm gonna continue on the e-commerce app. And specifically, I'm gonna be building the cart and the cart checkout in this video. So in the last video, I built the buy now button where I added in Stripe and I allowed people to purchase products and go through that purchase page. But it's only for one product. So if it got to the point where a user wanted to have multiple products and then check out at one time we don't have anything for that so that's what i'm going to build today so i hope you guys are excited if you want to build a cart for your app this is going to be a perfect example and yeah you can just follow along and learn something about rails and all the tools that i'm going to be using for this so the first thing i'm going to do is just cd into our app e-commerce all right whoops can never for oh i called it e-commerce rails but i can never i always like end up putting two c's for some reason but that'll be like echo echo commerce or echo merce <laughs> so now i'm gonna run bin slash dev to start the server and now our app is running on localhost 3000 so we can view that by opening up the browser and then heading over to localhost port 3000 so this is what our app looks like right now we just have this simple like page, we don't even, like it doesn't really make that much sense right now. We just have this title and then we have our different products. We can click on them and see this nice show page and we can also buy the product. What we're gonna be doing in this video is adding it like a nav bar to the top. Maybe we'll do some more styling improvements too on the site, but mostly it's just gonna be the nav bar and the cart. So let's get right into this. So what we can do is we can open up our code and do that by typing code dot now it'll open up my code in VS Code. And from there, I'm gonna head over to the app views layouts and the application file. So the application file is where all of your pages get rendered inside of this yield. And this also has like styling for the main app. So you'll notice like this background color, we're setting it on the body inside of this application file. And that's what's keeping the same background on every page that you go to. And then those templates are just rendered inside of that body right here at the yield. So what we're going to do is to add the nav bar. I'm just going to put the nav bar right at the top of the body. And it's going to be a little div that will make like stay fixed at the top. So I'm actually going to create a partial for this and then I'll render it right here. So we can do that by saying render layout slash nav bar. And this is going to be a partial that I'm going to create inside of the layouts folder. Now you have to specifically set the path because by default this will render with the context of the template that you're on so when you say render this it would actually look inside of the file unless you have a fixed path like this so i know it's kind of confusing right now but when i say render layouts nav bar it's going to specifically look in the layouts folder for this nav bar partial so to create the partial i'm just going to create a file and every partial starts with the underscore. That's how you know it's not a full template. It's just something that you're gonna render in other files. So it's gonna be underscore navbar dot html dot erb. Now inside of this navbar partial, we can start styling the navbar. So I'm just gonna simply add a div, give it a height and a width, and then we can just do fixed top zero. So that's gonna make it stick to the top. And then we can put a background color just so we can visually see the nav bar. Now I'm gonna reload and we'll see that we have our bar at the top of the page and it should be fixed, which means if we scroll, it'll keep the same position. Now, I don't think any of our pages are big enough to scroll on, so I can't really test this out yet, but I can already kind of tell that it is working. From here, I probably wanna change the color to be something that matches more with our app. So I might do like, how about let's go with a dark nav bar, see how that looks. I'm gonna use BG Gray 900, and that's cool. And I probably want like, maybe some sort of logo, some sort of like home link, that could be the first thing that we add. So inside of this div, we can actually add more styling. We can say flex item center, which means it's gonna keep the item centered. It's but they're still gonna be stacked right next to each other. We can also do P2. And let's go ahead and add our first link. So I'm just gonna do a link to home, and then this can go to just slash. 
So this means like the main root in our app, or you could just say root path if you want to use the Rails helper. And we can just do some simple styling, like making it larger and then making the text light. If we reload, this is what that looks like. So we have this little home link, which would be able to take us home. Now it looks kind of weird because, well, I feel like it should probably be more like centered in the middle, maybe to match where some of these containers are. So what we might want to do is we might want to take this styling, like the flex styling off of the top level div and then create another div inside of there where we can add a max width. So we can do like max width, 5XL, max auto, and then put our link inside. We could add that flex styling. But I don't know if we're gonna need padding anymore. And you'll see what that does is it actually puts the element in the center. But now the text is kind of at the top, which is because this needs to implement height full. So it takes up the full height of its parent. So then it would be able to center the element correctly. So that's still actually a little bit, that's a little bit too in the, in the middle. So I might use max with seven XL instead of five XL. All right, that's fine. Maybe PX eight, because I really want it to match up to where like the products are. So I guess that's kind of fine for now. And what we probably want to do eventually is instead of saying home, it would be like the name of our app and then probably some logo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the text and I'm gonna switch this to a block so that we can wrap some content inside of it. So that just means removing the text and then adding do and an end. And inside of here, we can put whatever we want. So I can do a span just to put some text in it. And I can say like, this products. And then I also get like some sort of icon. So to get free icons, I always go to flaticon.com because they have all these different options that we can use. I want to find one for like a store, like an e-commerce store, you know, because that's kind of like what we're building. Shop. <laughs> this is kind of silly, but yeah, we can just do one of these silly icons for now. I'm going to download the 64 pixel version. And then let's go and add it into our app. So I'm gonna stick it in the assets images folder. Take it, drag it over. Now we have this grocery store.png image. And I can render that by doing an image tag. And then adding that file name, grocery store.png. Reload. All right, it's a little bit big. And also it's like stacked on top of each other. So we want to add the flex class to the link, I think. But I don't know if you can have flex on the link. Let's see. All right, it works. But the image is just huge. I want to see if I can resize that. It's like width 10 and use object cover. All right, that's a little bit better. And then on this link, we could add, try to add item center. To center the text. All right, that's cool. We could also do a gap or the space these out mm, that's cool but maybe even i want to do items end so that the text is like sitting at the bottom of the icon and then i can make the text bigger how about that so instead of text excel i'm actually going to move this styling onto the link itself although we don't have to or not the link on the span let's do text 2 excel and then, yeah, see the text kind of like fits next to the image. So that's cool. Now, I don't know what our app is even going to be called because this would probably be the name of your app. So we could just call ours like e commerce rails. That's cool. Yeah, I think this is fine. That's the name of our app. You click here, it goes back to the home page. And then on the other side, we would have probably like a cart. So let's just go ahead and add that since we already have flat icon open. We can just look up cart and find a good icon for our cart. Oh, and also we could use one of these for the add to cart button. Let's see, which one do you guys think I should use? How about the yellow one? That looks kind of cool. So 64 pixels was kind of big, but 
it seems to it seems to have came out a, little, a pretty like fine but maybe i should try 32 pixels so it's already a little bit smaller easy to work with so let's try to add this in parts and then on the nav bar what i'll do is i'll add another link to oh actually i don't even know if i want to have it in a link to yeah i forgot the link to for now let's just add the image tag and then we can think about what type of element we want to put around it. So carts.png. And let's just see how that looks if we reload. All right, so the, the cart icon is actually the right size. But now I want to move it to the other side of the page. So to do that, I just need to add one class onto this div. And that's the justify between class. So justify between will push both of these elements on opposite sides of the container. So we have the home link over here and then the cart on this side. Now the cart icon does look kind of blurry. That's one problem with using like PNGs once they get pretty small. But for right now, I think it's fine. And we could even work on some sort of like hover state or something eventually. Yeah, it's cool. I feel like we got the nav bar out of the way. I want to add some more products real quick so I can test out the navbar styling and how it works when you start scrolling more so let's go ahead and do that now i need to go over to the admin page so i can sign in so i'll go to admin sign in and i think our thing was just admin at site.com and my password i think it was like admin123 okay <laughs> not the most secure password but it works so now we can go ahead and create a new product by going to products new and I'm going to try to find some products online right now just find like trendy t-shirts and try to put some of these on our site shop trending designs All right. hopefully there's nothing too crazy for my video All right, this one looks cool. DJ Bruce Lee. Let's grab the description. Whoops. It's a little bit too much description. Then we need the images. So I'm just gonna start saving these. Hopefully those are saving as images. They're as web piece, so that's fine too. All right, now we have a bunch of images. So I'm gonna take these. Actually, I'm gonna delete that so it's easier to grab all these. And I'm gonna bring them into my images field. For the price, I guess it's like $32. And then category, we can select t-shirts. And I'm gonna create the product. Let's go. I don't know why it's taking a second. That's weird. What happened? Could not obtain a connection. What does that mean? What the heck? That is pretty weird. I've never had that happen. What does that mean? All pools are in use. What does that mean? I don't even know actually, that's weird. Let's see if our product, oh, our product did save. All the images are there. Just not sure what happened. Okay, but it's fine. So even, I think I want another shirt. Let's try to get another one. Ah. I don't know if some of this stuff can get me demonetized. <laughs> Espresso Minute, it seems fine. <laughs> name, description. And then grab some images. All right, now we have some images. I can go and drop those in. It's kind of annoying the 
The ordering is weird, so I can't select them all at once. But I'm just going to remove the old, the other one. There we go. Now I can drag it in. I think I'll just put the prices like $34.95. Put it in t-shirts. Alright, now we have a couple t-shirts. If I was to shop by category. Well, actually, one way I know we can test scrolling is if I go to mobile responsive. Oh, I guess we haven't even handled that on the cat on the what is this? The products. Or no, the category show page. We didn't handle mobile responsive. So let's do that. Because these cards should look like all messed up and they should just be stacking on top of each other. So let's go over to the categories show page. And I'm going to fix that issue. So all we have to do is add a breakpoint onto this products container where we have the grid columns and just say that we're only going to use four columns after on any device that's bigger than medium size which means on mobile it would go back to just grid without the grid calls which is just one element on each like row and now as you can see actually our navbar is sticking but it looks like it, it sometimes goes behind some of the images for some reason <laughs> now the reason is because of the z index so for whatever reason this image has a higher z index than the navbar so all you have to do to fix that is add a z index onto this navbar div so i did z50 and now that should be larger than whatever that z index is so now you'll see that the navbar is staying at the top which is pretty cool cool so now we have the navbar we have a little cart icon from here, let's implement adding items to cart. So that would just be another button right next to buy now. It says like add to cart. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, let's go over to the product show page. And then we just need another link. Let's do that link to add to cart. Now this would be like some sort of path. Add to cart path. Now, why don't we just do that right now? So before I finish that link, I'm going to quickly add the controller and the path. So what I'm thinking is, let's just add a resources for carts. And then we'll only do a create action. As simple as that. Resources, carts. And then what we can do is create a cart controller. So inside of controllers, create a new file called cartscontroller.rb. This is going to be a class. It's going to inherit from application controller. And then we're going to do a create action inside of it. And here is where we're going to create the cart. Well, or update it, I guess. Create or update. So now when you do link to add to cart, we can go to the carts path. And then what I'll do is I'll pass in a product ID. I'll set that to product ID. Let's just do a class. Honestly, we could just probably take a lot of the styling from the buy now button. I have no idea how this is going to look. Let's reload. We're going to have like two giant yellow buttons. Wow. Okay. I mean, yeah, that seems kind of right. Buy now or add to cart. So maybe for add to cart, we'd have a different look instead of yellow. We could do like grayish. I don't even know. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fine for now. We have buy now or add to cart. Honestly, that's kind of fun, or that's kind of fine. <laughs> I think what I want to do is align them side by side. And maybe on mobile, but we can think about styling, which actually our products page doesn't really resize on mobile if you look, if you notice, because the, the pictures and the text is still side by side. So let's quickly address that. And the reason being is this grid up here, there's no breakpoint. So we need to add medium breakpoint on the grid calls. Now when we reload, oh, it looks so much better now. And then this might be fine, but I think we could still do them side by side. So to do them side by side, we just have to add a container around them. Just do like flex, justify between they literally have the same styling. Let's see how that looks. Okay, yeah, because they both have a fixed width of 64, but that's not really going to work now. So maybe I'll just get rid of that fixed width and see what we can do. 
So now maybe I can do a width full on these. There we go, width full. And then on this container, I can do a gap eight. And there, that looks pretty good. And then even on large screen, it actually still looks pretty good. But yeah, I'm happy with this design. It's cool. All right, so now when you click add to cart, what happens? We get a no route matches get carts. Oh, so that's because this link is doing a get request, but my controller action is a create, which means it's expecting a post request. So to make our link do a post request, you can actually do that with turbo. So I'm just gonna add a data attribute. I'm actually gonna go down to a new line. So what I did is I add a comma here, and then I can go on a new line and I'm gonna add the data attribute. It's gonna be a data turbo underscore method. Set that to post. And now add to cart is gonna make a post request. So when you click that, you didn't notice, but actually we made a request to the server. If you check the logs, we actually got a routing error. Oh, that was before. So where is it happening? Oh, right here. The last thing that happened, of course, started post carts and said no template found rendering no content. So now we can go into that controller and we can set up the code for the cart. So actually, I think we're going to have a cart model that we use in our app. So I'm going to generate the model by using the Rails G model command. So I can say Rails G model cart. And then a cart is going to have I think we should give carts like a unique ID that we can use to identify them. So we can call that like just say like secret ID or something. And we're gonna generate that for them. And then we'll use it to look up the cart if we still have it stored like in the cookies from the user. So we're gonna have a secret ID no, I don't really know if we need anything else. Yeah, I think this model should be good, like just like this. So I'm press enter to generate the model. And then we're also going to have cart items. So that would be a way to associate the products to a cart. So let's create another model, let's do model cart item. And this is gonna have a cart belongs to. So you say cart colon belongs to. And it's also gonna have product colon belongs to. And now a cart's gonna have cart items. Let's run that generator. And then finally we can do Rails DB migrate to update the database. Cool, so now we have our model set up. I'm just gonna quickly go in the code and make sure the rest of the models know about their associations. So for example, on cart, it doesn't have any code inside of here, but cart item, you'll see belongs to cart, belongs to product. So what you usually need to do in Rails is you need to now add the association to the parent to let them know that they have these children. So I'm gonna go to the cart.rb and add has many cart items. And I'm also gonna go over to product and add has many cart items. And then now another cool thing you can do in Rails is you can directly pull out the products by using a has many through you can say has many product. Now you can have cart has many products through cart items. So that's like a sick way that you can associate products to a single model without having the products, you know, belong to the cart directly. So it's kind of cool. I think this should work. So now let's get back to the carts controller. So inside of the create, what we do is we first need to set the current cart. So we're going to need some sort of like action for that. I think I'll do a before action, set current cart. And this will be a method that we use in our app. So I'm going to put that down here in a private for now. What we'll do is we would create a cart if we don't already have it. So based off the session, current cart ID, you can set it there. So we can just check first if session current cart ID, which right now, obviously we don't have one, but if there was, then we could do a cart find by secret ID, 
because secret ID is a method that we created. And then we would pass in the car ID and we would return this. So we can do like current cart equals something, or we just return this. I don't know. All right, let's use the at variable. So otherwise, if we don't have a current car ID, we're gonna actually generate one. We'd say like current car equals cart.create. Now, when we create the cart, I wanna set that secret ID. So we could do that in the controller or we could do that in a callback like on the model. So how about we do a before create set secret ID. So before create is gonna is a callback that gets run right before the cart gets saved for the first time before it gets created. So put a private method set secret ID. We say self self dot secret ID equals secure random dot UUID. So this is always gonna return a unique ID for your app. Now, if you wanna be even more secure than that, you could also do like plus date.now to integer, because that's also gonna be pretty unique. But then you probably wanna like limit the size of this total thing, because it would be pretty huge. Or not, I guess it doesn't really matter, right? Although I don't think you can add text to an integer, so then you'd have to say 2i.toString. I don't even know if this will work. Let's quickly check in the console. So I'm gonna open up my terminal. Just try to do this. Oh, it said undefined method now for class date. How about date time dot now? All right, look, this is what we get. This is pretty insane. Obviously, every time you do it, you're gonna get completely different values. So I think I'll use this. That's a pretty secure ID, or secret ID, and secure. Secure because it's secretive. All right, so then in the else statement, after we set current cart, we also need to set it in the session ID. So we'll say session current cart ID equals current cart dot secret ID. And then boom, we're basically good to go. Oh, but in the create action, so we have the current cart set at this point. We can use current cart to set a cart item. So we can say current cart .cart items create product ID is going to be the params product ID. So now this should actually save something to our cart. Now let's put it all together. And see if this works. So we can do that by just going back to our app, press add to cart, look into the console, and it looks like we created a cart. We also created a cart item. So if we wanted to go back to our Rails console, I'm gonna reload first and say cart.last. And you'll see we actually have a cart here. If we wanna get the cart items, we'll see that we have these items. And I'm also gonna to try to get the products, dot products. And you see it gives us the whole list of products. So that's pretty cool. We're able to do that pretty easily. So from here, it's just updating the UI everywhere. So like add to cart, would now show a different text. And also up here in your cart, it would show like some sort of indicator that you have some items in there. And then we'll probably have to add a drop down to or like some sort of thing for viewing the cart. So let's first of all, I guess we can mess with the add to cart button. So what we're gonna need is like a condition here. So I think right away, I'm just gonna abstract this and move this into a partial. So I'll render a add to cart. And then pass in the product. So this is going to be a partial that I create inside of the products folder. Add to cart. So underscore add to cart. Underscore add underscore to underscore. No, you get it. Just create that partial in the HTML to your B. Inside of here, we're going to have this add to cart link. But we'll have a condition first. So if current cart and current cart dot products dot where ID is at product ID dot any. So if there's any products with that this ID, then we just show some different text basically. We'd show like added already in cart. So let's go ahead and do that. 
I'm just gonna have straight up like a div. I'll do the same styling. Let's say like already in cart. Let's see if this works. So I reloaded. It didn't seem to work, but I think it's because we don't have the current cart set. Because we only are doing this before action inside of the carts controller. But now we're trying to like check it on the products page. So what should we do? Well, I'm almost thinking we should move it into the application controller. So we could try that out. So we go to application controller, move the before action in here. But now we're going to always be setting a cart, which is fine. But we're going to have probably have a bunch of like empty carts eventually. We can try to handle that later. All right, so I'm moving our set current cart into the application controller, which means on every page load, we'll be setting the current cart. And now when we go to our t-shirt, it says already in cart. So this is working just as we expected. The next thing we can do is up in the nav bar, show some sort of indicator that we have items in the cart. So I'll go over to the layouts nav bar partial. And we just have this image tag for the cart right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a div to wrap this image. And then I'm gonna have a class of relative. And then I'll just put like a, I guess another div of absolute. And we can do like top zero, negative right one. I can add a background color. How about we'll do yellow? We'll stick with the yellow theme. BG yellow 500. Text gray. I guess it's already going to be kind of dark text. All right, so we'll have this absolute. And what this is actually going to do is you'll see it's going to just be like this kind of like yellow thing, which I guess the cart's already yellow, so that's not going to work. Let's use a purple. It's like a little kind of box that's going right on top of the image because I'm using the absolute class. And I'm using like the top and the right properties to kind of position it. I can also add rounded large. All right, so now it's rounded. And then we would have the amount of items, like the count inside, but we actually want to do the, a condition on the outside so that we don't always render this indicator. So say if current cart and current cart dot cart items, I guess we can just say dot any. So if there's any cart items, then we show this indicator and we can just simply put this current cart dot items dot count. Like that. Reload. It's an undefined method cart. Oh, whoops. So for cart items, I accidentally did a dot instead of underscore. So let me give it that. Oh, and also I think right here. Oops. There we go. So it actually worked. Now, oh, so now this is kind of like the styling got crazy because I have all that padding. The P2 padding. So I'm going to remove that. Let's just do PX1. And we can also make the size of this cart smaller. Well, that is very, it's kind of hard to see. Let me add a lighter text color. All right, I think that's getting somewhere. Although text X are small, is just too, way too small. We want it to still be readable. So let's do PX2. Oh, that's a little bit too much. How about PX? Can we do 1.5? I think we can. All right, that seems good. And then what I want to do is just move it enough so that it's not right on top of the cart. It's like a little bit offset. So that's what the top and the right properties are good for. So I can do like negative right three. It should like move it out of the way three. We can do the same with top. Say negative top two. Move it up a little bit. Yeah, that seems kind of good. At this point, I almost want to change the icon for the cart though, because that looks, just doesn't really match the vibe for this site. Maybe like something more like a regular cart, like a shopping cart kind of thing. Yeah, let's go with this black one. Let me get the 64 pixel one. 
And then let's go ahead and drop it into our app. Shopping-cart.png. Then go back into the navbar and I'm going to replace the carts.png shopping cart.png. See what that looks like. It might be, yeah, it's definitely a lot bigger. So I'm going to try to fix the styling. You can add like a width 12 object cover. But now obviously I forgot that the size, oh, the size seems kind of weird. Let me switch to width 10. But really it's the color because now it's not really sticking out from the back. But there is something we can do. I think there's an invert class, which will invert the color. And yeah, just like that, it looks pretty good now. It sticks out from the background. And then we could probably move our, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's like a badge or like a, I've been calling it indicator, but let's like move that down a little bit more. Our count, you know, our, sho our shopping cart count. I think we'll go back to top zero. Yeah, you know what, that looks pretty good to me. And then for right now, instead of even messing with like a drop down, we might eventually want that. But for right now, we could just have a cart page, a cart show page. So why don't we do that? We can actually go back to routes RB and let's just do it on our resources carts. We can do like a show page. So only create, we're gonna do only, we're gonna allow the show action. And then we can go on to the carts controller, do def show. And we're still just going to have the current cart. We're not even going to do anything with the ID. We're just going to use whatever the current cart is. But we might actually want to say like redirect to. Or actually, no, we don't need to worry about redirecting. Let's just leave that. So let's go back to the nav bar. And we're actually going to put a link to around this whole relative class, this whole uh, div with the relative. We're going to do link to cart path. And then we're going to need to pass in our current cart. And actually, I'm going to use the secret ID just to make the URL more like obscure. Do end. So all I did is I added a link to with a do around this content for like the cart and the absolute styling and everything. If we reload, it looks exactly the same. But now when we click, it's actually trying to bring us to our cart. And you'll see it's using the secret ID up in the page. But now we have no view template because we haven't created the template yet. So to do that, we have to go and just create the carts folder and the view. So let's go to the views folder, create a new folder called carts, and then a new file called show.html.erb. And inside of here is where we'll show, you know, what what items you have in your cart. So let's get it started with the H1. I'll just say like your cart. Let's reload, see what that looks like. All right, cool. Let me try to center that. Or actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a div flex, flex call item center. I don't have the header. Reload, oh wait, that didn't do anything. I guess I need width full too. There we go. Now it says your cart underneath. I kind of want to do a message. So let's say if at current cart dot cart items dot any. And let's do a P say you have, and then we'll just list the count real quick. You have current cart, cart items dot count items in your cart np else oops and we're gonna have to end i'm gonna do a p you don't have any items in your cart yet so we have like other condition if you don't have any items in your cart so for us it says you have one items in your cart so that's cool and then we can style these p's if we want to i don't really know how i want to do it and I'll probably just add a BR between the H1 and that text. Okay. In your cart, you have one items in your cart. And then I would just go down here. We can loop through all of those items. Saying at current cart. Uh, actually, let's loop through the products. So say products.h2. Product. 
And actually, the funny thing is, we could literally just take the styling from our product show page. I'm kind of like being a little bit lazy, but that's how it is when you're a developer. If you've already done it somewhere, why do it all again? So actually, the products index page. Let's just take like some of the styling. So this div. Let's go back to our cart show page. Actually, there's a typo in the current cart. So div on the outside of the loop for like the grid calls and then inside, let's just simply render product slash product and then press in the product is the product. Now we have to do this explicit view because we're inside of the carts folder. So we're telling it to just render the one inside of the products folder. Now we can reload and boom, it actually lists our products just like that right on the page. Now we might eventually want to have like different styling. I think this is fine for now. It just shows each product. It shows your cart. Yeah, this seems good. Now the final thing would be to have like checkout. So checkout now. Why don't we just do that on the cart show page? Let's do it up at the top for now, just to make it easy. So inside of this condition, if there's any items, just do like a link to Check out now. And this is going to go to some checkout path, which we haven't defined. So I'm just going to do the pound sign right now. And I'm kind of lazy. So I'm just going to go and take the styling from the buy now button. Drop it in here. Reload. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, that's huge. Because that's the width full. Let's use um, MX Auto. We should already be pushed in the center. We don't even need MX Auto. And let's do a BR between these as well. All right, your cart. You have one items in your cart. Check out now. Obviously, the styling is pretty like bad. It's pretty <laughs> just having everything in the center like this. I feel like I could have it like over here on the right. All right, how about we do that? Because I kind of do like that styling. Uh, so to do that. What we do is we'd actually have another kind of thing. So let's get rid of the BRs. And we'll just do like a div class equals flex justify between. So we're actually going to be creating two divs. So this is the flex div. And then we have the checkout link on one side. On the other side, we're going to create this other div, which would be flex flex call gap four which would position the text on top of each other, but on the left side. So this is what it looks like. Oh, it actually looks kind of bad. I need to add with full on the flex. There we go. Your cart, you have one item in your cart and the checkout now. And then we can also do, I guess, an item center on this. And then I want to put some spacing between the products. So that's actually where we can put like a BR right down there. So we have your cart, you have one items in your cart, and then the checkout is over there. And even on mobile, it looks pretty good, actually. Yeah, I'm happy with this. So for that checkout cart, this is going to be another Stripe payment form for like cart checkout. So why don't we just go and define that right now. So let's start in the routes. We're going to create a new, either just an action on the carts controller or a whole another controller. I might just do it on the carts controller. So to do that, I'm going to add a do. And then we'll have a get checkout on member. So on member means it's going to use the ID and the URL. So it'd be like this ID slash checkout. If we didn't want to do that, we could also get rid of it by saying on collection. And then it would just be like this slash cart slash checkout. I don't really know what I want to do. So let's just do on member and we can pass in the ID. It doesn't really matter. Now I'm going to set a two to figure out which controller action it's going to go to. So it's actually going to go to carts checkout action. All right, so what this is going to do is it's going to look for an action on the carts controller. So I'm going to go and define that. F checkout. 
here's where we're going to be having our checkout action and then we can also create the view so inside of the carts folder in the views create a new file called checkout.html.erb this is where we're going to do the checkout we could probably honestly take the code from the buy now we can literally just take the same code put it inside of checkout and then we'll just update the URL that we're getting the session from instead of product by now we're going to have our own URL so we can create the session and then also some of this styling is different too so instead of like product name we could just say your cart and instead of product images it would be more like you know we have a bunch of different products so yeah let's not even really instead of this actually let's do like a list let's loop through current cart products each two products and we can just print out the product name i wonder how you set up a list with tailwind list disk let's try to do that We can put these in a p tag for now. Reload. Let's go to the cart page. Oh no, the checkout page. Right. This is totally different. So I'm actually still like trying to style the checkout page. Uh, and then the checkout URL, we're going to set that. Okay, so let's go back to the cart show page and set it up so that the checkout now actually goes to the checkout page. So I'm going to do that by removing this pound sign placeholder. And we actually need to figure out what route it is. So I might run Rails routes in the console just to help me figure this out. So I'm going to look through and see if I can see anything about checkout. Okay, it looks like checkout cart. That's pretty simple. So it's going to be checkout underscore cart path. And then we're going to pass in the current cart dot secret ID just to keep that secret ID in the URL which it's really like kind of stupid we're not using the we're not using it in the URL but I'm still doing it anyways we could refactor this if you guys want to help me refactor it please give me some suggestions all right so now we're on the checkout page this is what it's looking like so far so it is doing side by side your cart now obviously the stripe form's not working we still need to implement that, but let's go over to that checkout page and take a look. So we have our items. I might even have another P that's, that says like the count. You have, and we'll put current cart dot cart items dot count products in your cart. As you have one products in your cart. And then this right here is supposed to be the list styling but it looks like it's not working. I'm just going to remove that. Flex, flex call, gap two. See if I can style this P a little bit. All right, yeah, so it does like have all the products on the left. I don't know why the styling got messed up on this page. Seems kind of... Oh, we need a width full. That's why. There we go. So with with full, it looks a little bit different. Now this product looks super weird. So instead of max width to Excel, let's just do like MX auto. Center it to, or we could figure out something for the styling. But anyways, that's what would show on that side. I will say width index. So you can add with index and then get the index inside of here as well. And we could print this out. I'm going to get rid of some of the styling, like most of it, and then I'll wrap this in a div. Put index plus one because index usually starts at zero. So to get the like number value, I almost used the end for this to the end of the div too. That's usually what happens when I spend coding for too long. 
on a session. We're out of flex class. Let's wrap this number. All right, flex. I also want gap. We'll show like the product number. I think I want to add some styling on here, like P2 around to large. Oh, I just remembered instead of rounded large, I should be using rounded full to get like the full circle. Keep forgetting. There we go. So you have one products. You have one product. That's why you should use pluralized too. So it would change like based on how many products you have. I mean, that's fine. We could even style this div with a little bit of a background color. This looks pretty weird. I'm just kind of getting weird with the styling. Anyways, you guys get it. I want to spawn the style stuff with. But now for this, uh, for this checkout, we need the URL. That's why it's failing, because we didn't pass in the URL. So we're just going to need another, like, Stripe session kind of URL. Let's just go ahead and put that in the same controller. And then let's go to the routes. Do post Stripe session on member to cart Stripe session. And now we can go into the carts checkout page and we can set up that URL right here. So stripe session underscore cart path. Pass in the current cart dot secret ID. All right, so now it's going to make a post request to here and we're going to need to return, you know, the same Stripe checkout we do over here in the buy now controller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this code, bring it over here to our Stripe session controller. Oh, we also need a success route. So we might just have like a success cart route. We can go and define that too. So get success on member to parts success. So that looks good. That would be a view. Let's create that view real quick. Success.html.irb inside of the carts folder. And then on the carts controller, just create the action. Def success. And it's just going to be empty for now. There. So now we can have that success cart path. Or actually, it should be URL. And then pass in current cart.secretid. So that looks good. Stripe supported countries. This is fine. This was to get the shipping address for the product. Now for the name on the product, I think we might just want to either have like some text that says like your cart, or we could say we could like loop through all the items with some Ruby code. We could say like current cart dot products dot map and name dot join. Join with like a thing in the space. You can also do that. For the unit amount, we're actually gonna need to get all of the product prices and then multiply by 100. So to do that, I'm gonna get current cart dot products dot sum price. So this should actually return the sum price, then we're gonna return it, or then we're gonna multiply it by 100, convert to integer. So now let's put it all together and see if this works by reloading. And yep, look, our price is 31.95. That should be how much it is for the product over here. We should probably add that over on our like view of the product. So on our checkout page, I was kind of going crazy with the styling here. Not gonna lie, but we might as well put like the price too. We'll do like a number to currency, uh, product price. Thirty-one ninety-five. Okay, okay. So 
we know that we're paying the right price. Now, what if we go and add ourselves another item to our cart? Oh, wait, also the name up here. Okay, so that is fine. So let's go and try to add another item to cart. Let's get like an iPhone case. Add that to my cart. So now we have two items in cart. And I go to checkout. Now, what would the total be between these two? Actually, it looks like there was a glitch. What happened in the back end? I can't tell. Looks like the Stripe session wasn't loading. Oh, wait, it is working. So look, it literally says like the t-shirt and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. This is awesome. It's actually really working. So now for the email, let's do something cool. Mr. Mango. Oh yeah, now I'm in France, guys, by the way. So I need some addresses. Useful addresses. <laughs> Okay, this is so silly. There we go. Let's just get me a random address. There we go. Looks good. And then for the card information, I'm going to use the Stripe card so that my card will go through. <laughs> and then we can do a pay. Boom! We just bought ourselves two items. This is awesome. So now we could handle like the cleanup. Obviously, our cart still has like the items in it up here. And our success page isn't very exciting. So let's go to the success page and let's quickly add, like, let's throw together a little bit of styling. Honestly, let's just copy whatever we had on the buy now success. Because I'm just kind of lazy right now. So I'll plop that in. The only thing is we have to switch from product to using, like, you know, the other one. Current cart dot products dot map and name join this is just because i want to display all of the cart items for the image uh we just have so many images like this doesn't really make sense so maybe i'll grab the styling or like the stuff we had inside of here a checkout page why don't we which is basically just showing all of the products that you bought and their price and everything yeah you know what this actually looks good Thank you for purchasing your product. Oh, instead of your product, it should say like all of your products. All of your products will be shipped shortly. Yeah, see, that's cool. And then it shows you like the items you purchased. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. The only thing now is the cart itself right up here. It still has like, you know, it still says I have these items in my cart, but I already had purchased them. So I would think that cart will probably close. After you pay for the cart, I think it should close. So what we can do is on the cart's controller success action, let's just say like if current cart, oops, if at current cart dot cart items dot any, then we're going to take that current cart, destroy it, and then also reset the session current cart ID, set it to nil. I think that sounds good. Let's reload now. So I tried to delete the cart. It's saying foreign key violation on the cart items. Oh, right. So that's something in Rails. When you try to delete a parent, but it still has associations, you get this foreign key error. So the way to fix it is you have to just delete the children. And there's a callback. If you go to our cart model on this has many cart items, we can just say dependent destroy, and that will destroy the cart items when you're trying to destroy the cart. So now when we reload, uh, we'll see. Well, actually, now we now it doesn't show our cart. It doesn't show our purchases because I was using the current cart on that success page. Like on checkout success or on no on cart success i was actually using current cart but now that i destroyed it we can't use it that's something i didn't think about hmm. so we're definitely not going to want to use current cart right here guys we're going to need to use something else or actually let's just not destroy yeah let's just literally not destroy that cart how about that yeah, okay. Let's go back to carts controller success. 
All right, let's don't destroy the car, guys. But we will re well, we will set the session car ID to nil, but we'll keep the current cart, right? And then what we'll do is on the success page, instead of using current cart, we can just set another one. We'll call it like purchased cart. This will be equal to cart.find find by secret ID, and it will pass in that uh, uh, what like cart ID that we've been passing around everywhere. So if we look in the request, we're getting like this ID. I guess they just call it the ID. We can use that to find the purchase cart. And then on that cart success page, just go and replace where we're using current cart and replace it with purchase cart. Okay, there we go. Fix that issue. Now, obviously, we couldn't find any cart for this. So let's just get out of that URL. And let's go create a new cart. So I'm going to click here, get my t-shirt, get my phone case, get my Bruce Lee shirt. So now you see I have three items in my cart. So now I'm going to go to checkout. $77. Wow. Still going to Mr. Mango. Put it to that same address. Okay, I don't want to type anything. Where's the helpers when you need them? All right, there we go. The Stripe Google thing wasn't working for a second. Let me try to pay. And boom, it actually works, but it also clears the cart. So yeah, this is what we needed. We can see all of our items have been purchased. And then if we even wanted to save this URL, come back to it, you could go here in incognito. It would still work. And nobody's going to be able to guess that random ID. It's just too much. You got to try to go to 22. Like, no, that's not a cart. So actually, let's add a fix for this. So there's not even an error. What we can do is... Yeah, let's go right here. We'll say return to... Or no, redirect to cart path or wait redirect to root path if not purchase cart there we go so we'll prevent any errors if somebody does try to like mess with the url so like they went to check out if they try to go to the success page it says i mean it looks like it still works Right, because it's still going to be able to find the cart for the ID, but you didn't actually purchase. Well, it doesn't matter because it's, you know, it's not going to do anything for you. We're not going to send you the product if you didn't purchase, even if you can hack the URL. But we might want to have some sort of method on the cart that says, like, if it's complete or not. That might be a good idea. So we could add that and just go ahead and add that field. So we'll do a migration, add status to carts. Status can be an integer. And I'm going to go ahead and migrate, or I'm going to edit that migration before I migrate it. So go to the DB migrate folder, go to the latest one. And then on this status, I'm going to set default to zero. Now inside of the cart model, let's go over to the app models cart Darby. And I'm going to set up an enum status. And I'm going to set the values. So we're gonna have a few states. The first would be pending, and the second could be complete. So that's how we're gonna do it. And then what we can do is, once the person pays for the product, we would set it as complete, which actually we need to use webhooks for that. So I have to add in the webhooks controller and start listening to it, test that out locally. But I think this was kind of good for this episode. So let's handle, let's get back to this. I think this is fine for now. We have the status, which we're not using right now. Eventually we could try to do something with that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Obviously we could also add like, when you click the add to cart button, the UI doesn't automatically update right now. And that's pretty important for like an interactive app. Cause right now you'd have to reload to see that it works. 
Actually, let's let's make that the last thing that I do real quick is update the UI. So first of all, that add to cart button on the product show page, we already have it inside of a partial, which is perfect. Let's also put it in, a, in an ID. So let's do a div ID. Uh, add dash to cart. And then let's go up into the cart controller. So add on create. Right now we're not even doing anything. But if we were to create a template, actually inside of the views carts folder, if we create a file create.turbostream.erv, now we can use any sort of turbo that we want to do from here. So we can do like a turbo stream update. We're going to target the add to cart element. And then we're going to set a partial products add to cart. Let's set the locals product is going to be at product, which do we have at product in that carts controller? No, it looks like we don't have the product. So let's look that up inside of the create action. Say at product equals product.find. And then we can just use the at product.id right here. And then also inside of the turbo stream, it'll be able to pass in the product to this. So let's see what that looks like. Actually right away, <laughs> oh, the styling gets kind of messed up with that, with the ID. What happened? Let's go back to product show page. Something happened with the ID. So on add to cart, I guess maybe we just need to do a width full. Still, it looks like it looks weird. Okay, let's remove the ID. It should just look normal, right? Hmm, maybe we have to go into add to cart, figure something out. We have this widthful M MR auto. Maybe we need to take that, put it on like the top level. So actually I can do this inside of the partial. Just add a div with the ID. I don't know what the MR auto part's about. Reload, yeah, it looks kind of weird. Oh, maybe we should have width full on both of the elements too. Although we're really only showing the bottom one. Like that's the one that's messing up is the bottom one. I'm trying to figure out why. Oh, let's add the class of flex on this div. Oh, also, I'm trying. <laughs> Look, I was adding the styling into the ID, not the class. The ID should be add dash two cards. But I was thinking maybe you have to add the flex class. Okay, it looks like flex class helped. Everything's still working. All right, so now when I click add to cart, you'll see it automatically switches out the button for the other one show that it's already in cart. Now the count doesn't get updated at the top. You'll see it doesn't get updated when you add it to cart. Also, it would be really nice to be able to remove some items from cart. That could be something that we add in. Uh, we could just do that right on that cart show page. Right when we're rendering, like when we're looping through each of these items. We just have another div around this and I could have a link to move from cart. We have to go to some path that we have to create. That's what that looks like. Remove from cart button. Get some margin. Oh yeah, margin doesn't really work that well on links for some reason. We can do a BR. So now when you click remove from cart, that could remove the item from your cart. To do that, we need a route for this to go to. So I've been putting everything onto the carts controller. Actually, yeah, let's just do a destroy action. 
So we'll have destroy also. Now that could either mean all items or just singular item. In this case, it's going to be a singular item. So we can go ahead and create a def destroy. And then when you do your request here, I'll do the same lookup we do up here. Which actually, maybe I should have a before action for this. Set product. This would be a private method. So down here, I'm going to do a method set product. I can set the product. And then inside the destroy, what I'm going to do is say at current cart dot cart items dot find by product ID and then pass in at product ID. Set that cart item equals this. And then cart item dot destroy. Just like that. Alright, so let's try to hook this up. Oh, and the before action, I forgot. This needs to be only on create and destroy because those are the only methods that we're actually setting the product. All right. So let's see if this will work, if I can remove from cart. Oh, yeah, it doesn't because I haven't set that up uh, on the page. So on that cart show page, I need to change the URL, which would actually just go to cart path, and then we'll pass in... Uh, the current cart dot secret ID and also product ID at product ID which is this does this look right yeah that looks right because we're finding it by product ID perfect just like this remove from cart and the other thing is we're gonna add a data turbo method just like we did to for the add to cart button to make it do a post request we're going to have a data turbo method and we're going to have it do a delete request just like that now right away it says undefined method id for nil oh it's trying to pass in at product but we're using in like the scope that we're in we're just using product without the at sign all right, let me click remove from cart, see what happens. It looks like it actually did work. The only thing is it's the UI is not updating, of course. We could try redirecting. So one easy way is if in the destroy action, if we could just say like redirect to cart path and pass in current cart. Does that work? Yeah, that works. And it kind of automatically updates. We don't even have to use turbo. All right, so now for add to cart, we could actually do the same thing there instead of a turbo stream. We could just redirect, but a lot of times people want like that interactive, no reload, no redirecting. They just want stuff to update. So you can give it to them with turbo. All right, so over here in the nav bar, that's another thing we're going to have to update is this cart. So I'm going to put that into a partial. Render layout cart. That's where I'll put it. We'll pass in cart is at current cart. Just like that. And then we'll create that partial inside the layouts folder. Underscore cart dot And we'll put our code right in here. And then we just have to switch wherever we're using current cart to cart. Like this. So if cart and cart items. So that looks good to me. And we could also set an ID, just call it cart. Cool. And then inside of that cart create turbo stream where we're updating the add to cart button, we can now also update the cart. Just like this. And partial will be layout slash cart. And locals will be cart. Set that to current cart, just like here. And now this should do it. We can go over here, click add to cart. Wait, what is? Look, our turbo stream got went to the bottom of the page. I think I forgot the end. No, I forgot the the end of the Ruby code. So for some reason, it put it like right here. That's funny. All right, let's try this again. Add to cart. 
Look at that, the number automatically updated and the button updated. And then obviously if we want to remove from cart, it's very simple. So yeah, I think this app is very, like it's really good already. We can add our items to cart, we can create products. This is awesome. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. We can also check out, of course, we added that with Stripe. So wow, I'm really happy with the results of this. If you have any ideas for future videos on the e-commerce series or any of my series, please let me know down below. I'm going to be working on the Airbnb video series, adding some new features. So thanks everybody for reminding me. I've been loving the support on the channel. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys again very soon. Very soon. I'm going to be working on a lot of new videos.